There's no doubt that religious belief rests high upon the mountain of bullshit, reigning supreme over all the nonsense below it. But as every chess player knows, if you want to come for the king, you're probably going to have to take out some knights and rooks and shit along the way, which leads us to another edition of How Bullshit Is It? So, Heath, what morsel of mortifying manure do you have for us today? Today, we're going to be talking about the most adorable entry in How Bullshit History. Dolphin Assisted Therapy, or DAT. Okay, listeners, if you're not picturing a dolphin in spectacles with a clipboard <laughs> sitting behind a guy on a couch, you are not the woman I married, just oh, so you know. Okay, so... Sorry, Noah, one more. Uh, the dolphin therapist in the picture that you're picturing, uh, he practices CBT. E -E 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 okay, all right, yes. So, so with the assumption that Eli's <laughs> instincts are wrong here, what is Dolphin Assisted Therapy? It's the idea that traditional therapies can be rendered significantly more effective when combined with dolphins. Uh, okay, but what, uh, what are the dolphins doing? Mostly regular dolphin stuff, swimming around, blowing shit out of their blowholes, and occasionally doing that, you know, adorable, like, ee, 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 that dolphins do, obviously. So, okay, I can therapy. immediately see how that would make my therapy better and more effective. So, <laughs> right. I would like to officially <laughs> object to the C segment. I will no longer be participating. Okay, <laughs> but making it better for you in that sense doesn't necessarily mean making it more effective, the therapy. We've had animal based therapies for like 12,000 years. And despite all the recent advancements in psychiatric pharmacology, the absolute peak of therapy. You got to admit, it's getting your face licked by a dog, and it's amazing. Yeah, or, or giving belly rubs. Oh, when they do the face push, you know, when they take oh, their face and they push your hand they, with it. When we wake up and they do a big stretch. Oh, they do a stretch. Big stretch. Big stretch. Sometimes when I come home, my cats have left a space for me on the couch. Oh, yeah, that sounds nice. Cats are cool, too. Fun. Cats are cool, too, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, there are plenty of legitimate uses for animal therapy. So... Deciding the bullshit level of a particular kind is going to be based entirely on what kind of claims are being made about it. Okay, so what kind of claims are being made about it? And do they make these claims on porpoise? That you, you have to stop. Nice. You have to stop. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> For now. For now, I am and done. At the most plausible end of the spectrum, they say it increases language, speech, gross motor, and fine motor functioning among children with various disabilities. Some say it also improves memory, accelerates healing, and reduces stress, pain, and depression. But the more enthusiastic supporters also claim it's effective for treating autism, epilepsy, Down syndrome, dyslexia, Tay-Sachs disease, Tourette syndrome, cancer, and AIDS. What? They say dolphins can cure cancer and AIDS? <laughs> well, okay. They say it's useful in treating people who have cancer and AIDS, treating them psychologically, though. All right, well, I mean, I guess that's more plausible than them actually curing the AIDS, but I still don't see how <laughs> dolphins are going to, like, help a disabled kid's language skills either. Right, but just in case Noah's wrong, do they have signups available and do the parents <laughs> participate? Just Okay, well, no, I think you're focused on the D and not thinking about the A and the T of DAT, the assisted therapy part. What we're talking about isn't just swimming with dolphins. It's doing traditional forms of therapy whilst swimming with dolphins or in between swimming with dolphins. Very often, the dolphin is just used as a reward to reinforce the desired behavior. You show improvement in your speech, you get to play with the dolphin again. But that part generally gets left out of the narrative when you see this stuff in the news. They'll talk about swimming with dolphins and they'll talk about improvements in speech therapy for kids. And the reader is left with the impression that there's just something about the aura of dolphins that makes the kids be able to speak better. All right. So, but does DAT make traditional forms of therapy work better? Maybe, but mm, probably not. To be fair, there are a few studies that do show positive benefits for DAT. And the most prominent advocates claim that two weeks of DAT can be as effective as six months of dolphinless therapy. But whenever skeptical researchers look into those studies, those studies fall apart very quickly. Yeah, so you could say this is a case of cetacean needed. Okay. Cecil ran that play a while ago. It depends on <laughs> how far you're willing to stretch that joke, but yeah, sure, you could. But my point is that when skeptical researchers started digging into the studies, they found serious methodological problems in every one of them, including lack of consistent randomization, small sample sizes, 
insufficient or even absent control groups, lack of valid measurements, selection bias, and novelty effect. So yeah, half a dozen studies show that kids who get dolphin-assisted therapy do better than kids who don't. But if they don't account for things like increased personal attention and novelty and the known therapeutic benefits of travel, swimming, being somewhere warmer, and none of them do that, it's impossible to say what part, if any, the dolphins themselves are really playing in this. Okay, but imagine being the control group in that study and being told at the end, yeah, so um, the other kids got to go swim with dolphins, but you got to practice your M's with Miss Kelly, huh? <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Miss Kelly? All right, so so where does... Yeah, fun? <laughs> where does the idea of dolphin-assisted therapy even come from? All right, we have John C. Lilly to thank for that. Or, if you take Lilly at his word... We have the aliens he was psychically communicating with oh. to thank for that. There it is. Can't have anything nice. <laughs> <laughs> he insists it was actually them, those aliens, that suggested he start looking into dolphin research. According to his Wikipedia page, Lily was, quote, an American physician, neuroscientist, psychoanalyst, psychonaut, what? philosopher, writer, and inventor. End quote. I've never heard of psychonaut, but I'm assuming it's astronaut for <laughs> psychic abilities, something like that. For psychedelics, yeah. Mm -hmm. Psychedelic astronaut, <laughs> yeah. Yes. And he was, in fact, a prominent LSD researcher who pioneered a lot of sensory deprivation research. So if you ever heard his name before, it was probably on a list with Timothy Leary and Ram Das, people like that. Yeah, okay. So what I'm hearing is a very legitimate and reasonable source for mental health <laughs> advice. <laughs> no, just because something originates with a bit of a nutter doesn't mean it can't have value, to be fair. This podcast, for example. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, some very legitimate scientists did get involved in DAT research in the 70s. That included Dr. Betsy Smith, who was the first person to do research with dolphins and kids with neurological impairments. And she did see promising results that were worth following up on which she did, and rightfully so. But it's also worth noting that once DAT became widespread, she denounced its use and called it ineffective and exploitative. Okay, but if there's so little evidence that this works and the evidence is so sketchy, why would people do it at all? Oh, because money, Noah. Because right. The money. Got it. But the whole thing started with legitimate scientific observations. Granted, that's from a guy taking enormous amounts of acid, but scientific observations, nonetheless, they were there. So it wasn't unreasonable for researchers to look into its possibilities. But the media cannot resist any story about dolphins being awesome and possibly having magical powers. So as soon as the study showed that there might be any therapeutic benefit to swimming with dolphins, the media immediately started running stories with headlines like, swimming with dolphins can relieve depression and dolphins help kids cope with emotional challenges. Like no matter how bad the studies were, they ran the headlines. Okay, but like this is hardly the only therapy that the media overhyped based on bad evidence. That's, I mean, that's most of science reporting, really. Oh, he's been hanging out with Tom again. He's been hanging out with Tom again. <laughs> right, but this is a case of taking something people already want to swim with dolphins and adding a veneer of medical necessity to it. And that creates a feedback loop, a bad one. The media does a story about the research, then patients avail themselves of the therapy, then the media does a story about the people doing the therapy, then more people do the therapy, etc. And on top of all that, DAT is generally aimed towards children with disabilities, autism, and desperate parents of kids with autism or cognitive impairments are ready to try everything. So before you can even say valid control group, you've got a multi-million dollar industry. Okay, so how much would dolphin-assisted therapy run you? Well, a hell of a lot more than doing a swim with the dolphins tourist thing after doing therapy. According to that same study, the typical price for five 40-minute sessions is about $2,600. The typical cost for the exact same thing, but without the word therapy attached, is between $100 and $125, according to Google. And look, if you're rich and you notice your kid with autism does better when therapy happens in a dolphin tank. That's one thing, I guess. But a lot of the people doing this are desperate parents who believe this is the best use of their $2,600. And that's money that could have bought way more time with pretty much any other therapeutic option for people who aren't rich. Okay. I mean, can we get the dolphins working with early intervention? Are they willing to take sliding <laughs> scale? 
Maybe we group them together in an app called Don't do it. Better Kelp. <laughs> that's, okay, that's fine. No, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I don't think I could. When you look into this stuff, a lot of it is absolutely heartbreaking. It really is. It's sad. National Geographic did an expose on it where they talk about these parents of a young boy who was paralyzed in a car accident. And they spent thousands and thousands of dollars after an acupuncturist recommended a DAT clinic in the Bahamas to the family. Wow. Yeah, I mean, they really should have put a life jacket on that kid, though. That's on them. Oh, all know? right. So, no, so how <laughs> widespread is this? How, how widespread is dolphin-assisted therapy? The study linked on the National Institutes of Health website found that, quote, all over the world, including Europe, the Middle East, Asia, which includes the Middle East, USA, the Caribbean, <laughs> Mexico, Israel, Russia, which is either Europe or Asia, either way, they already covered that. Japan, China, um, okay, what do they think Asia means? Whatever. <laughs> Bahamas and South America all have this type of therapy, end quote. Wow. Okay, so, so now let me clarify here, because I, I think we mostly agree that swimming with dolphins or using dolphins as rewards for behavioral improvements is plausible, but DAT practitioners, they're saying that the therapy is effective beyond that, correct? Beyond that, yes. Okay, so what the fuck are they saying? Are they saying that dolphins have <laughs> magical psychiatric powers? <laughs> Almost exactly that. Yes, they are. Okay, so follow-up question. Uh -huh. What the fuck? Yeah, right. <laughs> Perfect question. Well, there are three dominant theories about how and why DAT works, other than it doesn't, which seems to be the correct answer. I'll give them to you in order of stupidness. So the least stupid is that dolphins have a built-in affinity for people with disabilities and are therefore able to communicate with those people through mutually understood instinctive body language. This is called by the people who actually want you to take it seriously. They call it secret language. <clears throat> and that was the least stupid? The least stupid. I was going to yep. say, yeah. Correct. Oh, okay. So the idea that dolphins can look at a person and go, well, that one seems down because of his clear cognitive impairment. I should cheer him up with the old tail waggle. That's the, that's the theory? <laughs> More or less, yeah. I don't know, guys. A dolphin and my son watching an ASMR marble video both make the same sounds. They do the same flaps. I feel like we should be more open, guys. <laughs> so, all right, no, let's crank the stupid up a notch here. What's the, what's the next theory? Well, this one is the most common, as far as I can tell. And it's the theory that there's something about the chirps and clicks that dolphins make to echolocate that has a mechanical effect on the human endocrine and neural systems. These effects, and, and to be clear, this is the theory and wording from the scientific studies used to justify this form of therapy. These effects enhance healing by changing the individual's body tissue and cell structure. What? Yes, and that is why, I shit you not, you can buy hundreds of dolphin and whale therapy CDs oh, for autism online. Oh, no. Yep. Now, the justification here is that there are therapeutic effects from ultrasound, but a researcher looked into that claim and concluded that, quote, even if the dolphin produced ultrasound continuously with a maximum power of 230 decibels, the application time of 10 seconds per patient is not long enough to be comparable to therapeutic ultrasound in human medicine, end quote. And needless to say, that's more ultrasound than a dolphin could possibly produce. And besides, as they point out in the Skeptic's Dictionary entry on this subject, if ultrasound is the healing factor, why not just use ultrasound therapy? Right. Okay, well, I, I was promised an even dumber theory on top of this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. This one comes from... The Skeptic's Dictionary as well. Or rather, that's where I got it. The theory comes from self-proclaimed psychic artist and vibrational energy facilitator. Those are the titles of this person. <laughs> Rosemary Angelis, who believes that dolphins emit healing energy vibrations. Okay. She also claims she can channel dolphin energy and that if you put your hand over a picture of a dolphin that she drew, you can quote, Receive the sensation of their loving, healing, 
energies. Can you now? So and does does she um does she sell those pictures? Sure, the fuck it, does sell those. Yes, amazing. Oh, Who would have thought? I looked so hard <laughs> to see if I could find one online. Ah, oh, too bad. I want one? So and he's bad. got a birthday coming up and everything. <laughs> oh, exactly. Okay, well, this is where the real danger lies in all the shit. I could get a bad birthday present. That's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yes, there are some potential therapeutic benefits of adding dolphins to traditional therapy, especially for patients who don't respond well to normal social interactions. But the real question that researchers should be asking is whether the benefits are worth the costs. Is DAT more effective than doing the same thing, but with like a room full of rescue dogs instead of a dolphin? Is it more effective than just doing therapy in a tropical environment? Nobody knows though, because none of the studies on it bother to ask those questions. And because they've abandoned that basic scientific rigor, They've invited in all the woo merchants now, of course. After all, you can't really knock down Rosemary's magic dolphin picture claim without potentially knocking down the whole house of cards. So you have no real choice but to make room for every single ridiculous claim. Okay, and so I ask this not to be dismissive, but because I find that the answer to this question is always worse than I thought it was going to be when we do these segments. But <laughs> what's the worst that could happen? Well, you have to consider, first of all, that Dolphins are wild animals. They can't really be domesticated the way a dog can. And while I couldn't find any instances of dolphins behaving aggressively or biting someone during DAT treatment, it's always a possibility. But there's also the possibility that the bullshit theories that are propping it up, i.e. the idea that dolphins emit soothing energy waves or that echolocation clicks have healing properties, that stuff could spill out into other medical areas. Uh, uh, such as? All right, so let me tell you about dolphin-assisted birth. Oh, you're fucking kidding me. <laughs> we all wish I was, as much as we know I am not. Back in 2015, a couple in Hawaii named Darina Rosen and Micah Sun Eagle decided to rely on the help of dolphins gonna not acknowledge to that deliver guy's name. Sun Eagle, We're just going to go right cool. past it. His name is Micah <laughs> Sun Eagle. That's fine. They decided to rely on the help of dolphins to deliver their baby in the Pacific Ocean, of course. Well, right, because that's where the dolphins are. The dolphins in the Pacific are, Ocean. Yeah, that's, that's where you where find they are. them. Yep. So, yeah, the plan was that when Dorina went into labor, they'd close down the spiritual healing center that you already knew they owned, even before I mentioned it, <laughs> and they'd rush <laughs> to the nearest dolphin-infested beach to give birth the way that God intended. Dangerously. Dangerously <laughs> true. Yes. <laughs> in preparation for the birth, Dorina even communed with dolphins in a special dolphin blessing ceremony. You know, of course, of uh, fucking ready. course she did. So why did she want Flipper as her midwife? You mean other than the fact that the, the baby's immediate exposure to the dolphins would mean it would be able to speak dolphin other than that? <laughs> Is that what she thought? Well, it's what she said she thought. So. <laughs> okay. I mean, you're being sketchy here. He can the kids speak dolphin? <laughs> Answer. Unfortunately, no. As far as we know, no. Rosen went into labor in the middle of the night. And since it was the middle of the night, there was no time to, you know, get to a beach and <laughs> wake up the dolphins. So right, they'd be sleeping. She had, she had to give birth on dry land like a, like a noob. Yeah, so we have no idea if it would have worked. We're dolphin birth language immersion agnostics. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so not willing to make claims either way. Actually, you wouldn't wake up dolphins. They only sleep with one half of their brain at a time. Sorry, sorry, not really important. Okay, as silly as this is, is it a real concern? It's not clear that anybody has ever actually done a dolphin-assisted birth, like, <laughs> quote, successfully. But there's at least one clinic in Hawaii that does promote it. And there are clinics all over the world that are already offering dolphin-assisted therapy and are increasingly unmoored from science. So it feels inevitable that they're going to start making ever more grandiose claims to fill out as many of those $2,600 sessions as possible. All right. Well, I guess the only real question left to ask is, how bullshit is it? Okay, I'll tell you how not real it is. It's less legitimate than dolphin-assisted shitting. Like, there's a way for that to be real. I feel like a dolphin could help you shit in a more real way than they could help you do therapy. I, I have a sneaking suspicion that Eli's going to find out. And on that note, we're going to wrap it up, but there will always be more fecal fallacies to come on. How bullshit is it?